Hello and welcome to the show. Now, so far, when it has come to the Hot Wheels showdown, Grip is by far and away the most important characteristic. We've had some relatively high-powered, some very, very fast cars go around this course, or fast cars in a straight line go around this course, but none of them have really gone particularly quickly. A Honda Civic and a Porsche 911 are our current joint leaders. So, if we're going to have something to challenge them, we're going to need something with a lot of grip, and the Honda NSX is certainly not a bad place to start with. I have a good track record with these vehicles, and I know how quick the NSXs can be when it comes to the cornering. And the plus side of going for the older NSX is that we can get a wide body kit on it. We can get a Liberty Bunny kit on the vehicle. Now, while personally I'm not necessarily a massive fan of the kit itself, the good news is it can get some giant tyres on. That'll give us a lot of grip, so that is what we are going to be going for. Uh, let's go and see how how much uh, tyre width we can get on. Uh, Wing-wise, we can get a ginormous wing or a Forza wing. Now, as, <laughs> as much as I like the Mighty Wing, I mean the Forza wing for downforce. So that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be going on there. Our tyres, we will be getting, of course, the Hot Wheels Race Compound tyres. Now that does take up a lot of PI. That does jump us all the way up, almost into uh, S1 class. And that's, uh, that's a lot. But we are going to have two 9.5s at the front, which is some lovely big tyre widths. And we're putting our three four fives at the rear. Oh, three two fives at the rear. Okay, not quite the ultimate biggest tyres you could possibly get. But that's still very, very big. And that is on a car, remember, that is going to be good handling. So, yeah, there is a lot of potential for this NSX to go fast. The fear with this vehicle is that we are going to run out of PI. We're going to run out of PI to do power or weight reduction as well we've seen uh, this, I don't know test that it doesn't actually matter necessarily a huge amount which way you go with these um, but yeah sometimes cars just get stuck with uh, not quite being able to get the power to weight ratio overall that are needed. I think we're going to want I think we're going to go the first stage of weight reduction and then just chuck power parts on it as much as we can. I will actually, while I think about it, get, uh, this is always important with these, get a gearbox that we can adjust gear ratios on as and when we need, because I will be changing them for this series because of the very, very long straights and the boost pads. The cars need to be able to uh, have gear ratios capable of going well past 200 miles an hour. Now, the standard engine should uh, prove no problem in getting this car to the top of S1 class. The kind of question is, do we keep it naturally aspirated? Do we go for a turbo? Uh, I, I don't know if there are supercharger options, actually. Let's go have a look, shall we? Uh, aspiration, we can. We can have a twin turbo, we can have supercharger, or we can have centrifugal supercharger. I might just keep it as naturally aspirated, to be honest. Uh, we'll get enough power to get to the S1 class, I am fairly confident, without having any form of forced induction, and we'll keep the weight down a bit. You know, we'll keep, it's, it's not necessarily a huge amount uh, of, of weight, you know, adding the turbos and, and supercharged, not compared to some some stuff you can do to the vehicle but uh yeah i think it's the way the way to go uh we are or maybe we will have to i'm surprised i was expecting this to get to the top of s1 class relatively e oh there we go <laughs> we are we are getting yeah we'll get there uh, i was expecting camshafts because you know they give the one of the biggest power increases although having said that actually a lot of these parts here are actually giving a fairly substantial gain which is it embarrass more than you see some from some other engines Okay, we've got two PI. Unfortunately, we can't get the pistons on, so what we'll do instead is we will go and grab as much of the uh, weight reduction part as we can. So, drive line and clutch. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. We're down to under 2,600 pounds, 473 horsepower. So, power-wise, it's, right it's right around the level that uh, the Porsche was. Similar sort of weight as well. I think we're a little bit less torque than the Porsche had, but... Uh, yeah, there is definitely a lot of a lot of potential in the NSX to to be going very very quickly indeed. So we have come to the skyscraper takeoff circuit where the Honda NSX will have five laps to try and go as fast as possible. The current times to be to one thirty five zero set by that Civic and Porsche. And this is going to give them a good run for their money, I think. 
it's uh, yeah not going to be very quick in a straight line. It is likely to struggle with uh, with that. Very very similar though to the Porsche. I'm hoping we can carry enough quarter speed. That's the uh, that's going to be the trick here. And yeah, you know the thousands of horsepower cars have been doing 230 miles an hour in a straight line, which NSX will never get. I, I very highly doubt this NSX will ever get near that. But the NSX well, can't quite be flat out up there. Okay, <laughs> I was expecting. I was expecting perhaps a little bit more grip through that corner. Admittedly, you know we have just started on a little bit cold tyres. Perhaps you know tyre temperature not as important on a Horizon as it is on the likes of Forza Motorsport games, but still play a little bit of a factor on the uh, opening lap. Yeah, I was expecting a uh, tad more on the way in the way of grip. Sorry, through there as so we're going to fire it through the uh, crossover points. Yeah, it's got lovely, lovely composure. No real concern about spinning the wheels through there. Now, we weren't flat out through the opening part, so I highly doubt we're going to be flat out through here. Indeed, or need to uh, kind of get away with it. Uh, <laughs> just about. We did need a bit of a lift on the way through there. This is where it's going to hurt, though, the Honda. It is not likely to be fast across here. What are the boost pads going to launch us up to? 200, I'm surprised, see, 207 miles an hour from the NSX, although we're going to struggle our way around the top of the course, catapulting our way down towards this uh, final corner. Yeah, no, no, nowhere near as fast, 10 miles an hour down on the uh, Civic. We do, though, manage to uh, pull it all up in time. 37-4 from a standing start. Now, admittedly, it isn't the, uh, the biggest difference between a standing start and a flying lap here because you have to really slow down for that final corner. You're not crossing the line at 180 miles an hour, but still, 37.4 <laughs> is a massively quick lap time from a standing start. And that was with not even being able to be flat out up here. Are we going to be quicker this time around? Still had to have a little bit of a uh, confidence lift in the NSX. Now, are we going to have the speed... Are we going to have the grip, sorry, to get... We're not quite able to take that flat out there either, which is a little bit of a shame. I don't know whether it's we have less grip than the Porsche or if we're going slightly quicker through that section than the 911 was doing. And uh, that's why we are unable to be flat out. Ooh, turning a smidge too soon through there. And then I had to have a couple of stabs. That was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible through the crossover point. Uh, that's my bad on that one. We've got a few more attempts at least to uh, get that one right. We're going to have a little bit of a lift on our way through that uh, quarter once more. Keeping it about 120 miles an hour though is, I think, pretty damn good going for the NSX. Right, across the boost pads once more we fly. It's going to be not quite as good of a uh, launch off of them this time around. I think we were still slightly slightly bouncing from the uh, landing of the initial initial jump. Yeah, we are. It's 201-ish. Oh, maybe we'll put that up in time. That was massively late on the brakes down there. We've scraped the wall. It's a 35-6 with a slightly scruffy lap. Definitely more speed in this car. It's. I think it's going to end up very close. I think it's going to go very, very close. Whether it can be the first vehicle to break into the 34s, I don't know. I don't know. We will have to wait and see as we run up here. Oh, not quite flat out. I had to have a small list of lifts. And I should have lifted a little bit more because we bounced off the wall. Got away with it. But uh, still, uh, again, we have a tiniest of lift. It's so, so close to being flat out through that section. It's not going to be flat out around here that much. I do know. We'll leave it in uh, fourth around there as we go. Oh, this car doesn't have a sixth gear, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, don't worry. It's just not me being a moron. It doesn't actually have a uh, sixth gear. I look when I check the gear ratios, and uh, yeah, there, there is no sixth for the uh, the NSX. So I'm not being a complete tool. Uh, it's a, uh, a slightly different thing to have to uh, be dealing with in this in this car. Uh, perhaps should have gone for the full race gearbox, but it's, it's working. You know, it's, it's doing the it's doing the job here with this one. We're going to fire it. Or oh, I have a small correction on the... There we go. See, we've got a better 
Got a much better launch that time around at 206 miles an hour as we will fire our way down towards this final corner. Even with such a good run, it's only a couple of miles an hour faster as we head down here. It's a little early. <laughs> After last time, by skating off towards the wall, I was a little earlier on the brakes that time to make sure we got stopped and I was a little bit too early. Really, really difficult place to uh, judge braking down into that final corner. There's... there's not a huge amount in the way of braking markers to use. There's the checkpoint flags that I tend to use for the uh, fastest and the cars that are struggling with, with brakes and so on. But if they're not needing that, if that's braking too early, then it's really difficult to find a, a consistent braking point. And a car that's doing, you know, 200 miles an hour into a horrendously, horrendously tight corner. Uh, that was a better run from the Honda there. That was a very good run, in fact, from the Honda. <laughs> Working the tyres so hard, it is throwing smoke. Oh, I don't know whether the front or the rears. It was throwing a fair amount of smoke from just trying to get around the corner. Uh, slow it down for the crossover point here. I think third is the way to go through that section. I think second, yeah, you'd just be buzzing the limiter. You'd also be perhaps a little bit inclined to spin the wheels up as you change from second to third and so on. Uh, oh, we are... Oh, let's try a slightly different line through there and it's not worked. It was worth a go, but uh, hasn't particularly worked that lap around. Okay. Uh, don't know whether we're going to go faster uh, lap time-wise. It'll be interesting to see. And uh, there we go again. Good boost. Good boost from that. As if we can get just the... get the landing just before we hit the uh, boost pad. That seems to be the uh, most helpful one that we can have. So up at the flags we go, dive on the brakes. It is a good stop this time into the penultimate corner. Oh, we've gone faster. <laughs> we have gone much faster indeed. We I say much faster indeed. It's three, uh, three tenths-ish faster in the NSX with one more lap to run. We actually got a little bit of wheel spin from the Honda out of that corner, which is surprising to, uh, say, the, to say the least. Right, throw it up this uh, section. Oh, the grip is good in the NSX. I don't think it's quite, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's quite as nice as the Porsche in some ways, but uh, certainly not as composed through there as the Porsche or here, but perhaps it is just that we are going quicker in the Honda. As we are now heading up to the split section for the final time, how late dare I be on the brakes? You know, it has got phenomenal, phenomenal brakes, and typically I <laughs> get caught out a little bit by the brakes turning in that smidge too soon. Uh, not, not really ideal. As I said at the start of this series, I'm not really fussed about the, uh, the dirty laps and so on. There is no time to be gained from doing that. That was a down. I thought we had the uh, the the quarter dealt with, and it uh, it was not. Yeah, no time to be gained from all of that. Oh, I was in a wonky gear uh, across there as well. Let's change up in the fifth. Yeah, it's not going to be a better final lap. I think it was pretty much gone when we uh, smacked the wall on the way through there. Yeah, you you will only ever lose fractions of time from bouncing off the walls around here. So. Uh, there we go. It is not going to be a faster final lap. It's going to be a slide out of the final turn. I think it was a 35-6 even. <laughs> a fairly scruffy lap. 34-7 from the NSX. I thought it might challenge the uh, the leaders, and that it has done. It will go to the top of the table here with a very, very impressive performance. A nice car, a nice car to drive, struggles a lot with straight line speed, perhaps one of the slowest vehicles we have we have seen fairly, fairly similar speeds to the, uh, the Porsche, in many ways fairly similar cars, all focused on grip, and that has certainly, certainly served them very well at this track. The NSX will move three tenths of a second clear, for exactly three tenths of a second clear at the top of the table, displacing the Civic and the Porsche down to a joint second place. I mean, we are some almost a second clear of the Alfa Romeo 4C, nine tenths clear of that, and uh, yeah, the likes of the Subaru Impreza and so on. It's a good car, as you would expect. The NSX, a good car and well suited to this uh, this track that demands so much in the way of grip. That, though, is uh, going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.